Hey, it's your boy OG Boo Dirty from Memphis, Tennessee. And I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. Woo! I just picked up my shit and went live on the road. Fuck it, I had to shake back. I've been worried about doing no show, but selling these bowl. I had to get back. Alright, so we got OG Boo Dirty off the porch with us today, man. I'm good with you, bro. I'm feeling good, man. How you feeling today, man? I'm just finally, man, happy to make this shit work. We've been trying to make this shit work for a minute. Yeah, absolutely, man. But hey, all about perfect timing. You're here, so yeah, let's get it, man. How you yeah. feeling about this new year, 2021, man? I feel like it's going to be the best year. Yeah. You know, you're supposed to feel like that. New year, new shit on your mind. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to go forward with what I got planned on my mind. Okay. You know what yeah. I'm saying? How did 2020 go for you, man? 2020 went all right for me, too. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I probably like 2020 more than a lot of years. COVID didn't, didn't hurt me. You know what I'm saying? I hope it don't knock on wood, but you know, I've been straight. COVID didn't hurt me. It helped me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> COVID blessed the trap. Yeah, I feel that, man. So what's life like in Memphis these days, man? Hustling. Rough. Same old shit, just a different city. Yeah. And you grew up on the south side? No doubt. No doubt. The only side. <laughs> the only side. Yeah. Is there a difference between South Memphis and North Memphis, or is it pretty much all the same? Depends on what you mean, like, 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 we all the same. Ain't no difference. I'm just a split the town up. Ain't no different. Everybody doing the same shit. Hustling, trapping. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Toting choppers, toting Drake, killing. The same shit on every side of the city. Yeah. At what age would you say you jumped off the porch in South Memphis? Me? Eight. Eight? Nah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I ain't even have a care for your eight. Like, I was. Like, it was fun back in them gaps. Like, you enjoy what went on back then. Like, it ain't the same now. Yeah. Like, kids can't hang out like we could hang out with the older people a long time ago. Like, parents ain't going for that shit nowadays. Like, our parents not ever love that shit. Like, go hang out with your brother. Yeah, go, get out the house. Get out the house. Say. Don't come back to this certain time. <laughs> you know how that go. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Did you have any big homies, any older siblings out there, any OGs or anything? I got 18 brother. I ain't had no OG. My dad was my OG. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't really had no OG. Like, if you want, if you want a big brother to me, like you really want no OG, right? I can learn from my brothers, right there. Like my dad created a, a niss, like an in-house niss. I was born in a game. Like, hmm. you know what I mean? I ain't really need too much outside it. So did he kind of prepare you for what life is like out there? You can say that, and you know, you can't really know, prepare nobody for the life. You only can explain it to them, you know what I'm saying? So, now I, I give him that. Yeah, he did that. He, he molded me for the streets. He, he molded me for the streets. He made me the man I am today. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, he molded me for I give him that. He okay. a big time street nigga himself, so. Yeah. You know, you've been through a lot in the streets, man. Um, went to trial for attempted murder, right? Yes, sir. And you beat it? Yeah, that was one of them I beat. One of them you beat? How many did you beat? I beat four. Four? Yeah, I beat some murders, like attempted murders, first degree murders. I beat a couple of them. Hmm. Yeah, I was listening to one of your recent songs. I can't remember which one it was, but it said that they were even trying to hit you with Rico. That's why I had to chill out. A lot of people don't understand that chill out. You know what I'm saying? In the midst of it, I had 20 brothers get hit with the Rico. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, like, shit. In the last few years, like, my whole crew went to the Fed. Like, it's on the field, it's still out. So we coming back around, like, it's back coming together. Like, a couple of people headed home. A couple of people, like, a lot of people headed home in 2021. Like, there's going to be a lot of changes in 2021. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just waiting on the new year, what God got planned for us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I ain't going to put no names on who coming home because you never know who coming home. I ain't in control of who coming home. You know what I'm saying? So 
I'm just looking forward to it. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> Would you say the streets have changed much since when you were first coming up till today? Mm, nah. The only difference is they got more dangerous. Like, it ain't no different though. Like, everything they were doing, I was coming up, they still doing it. Yeah. Just more money, more guns. It's looking like, like, they're allowing us to get more money now, they're allowing us to get more guns. Like, no matter what, money and guns is all you see. Every channel you turn on the internet, on the TV, you know what I'm saying? Like, money and guns. Yeah. That's just it. What's some responsibilities of being an OG? Love. Love coming for the Lord. When you love somebody, come at your heart. If you love somebody, it can never really hurt you. An argument, a conversation, none of it can never hurt you because it comes from love. Yeah. Loyalty, you loyal to something. To that person, you still loyal to something. You know what I'm saying? Don't, it's up to you to find out what a person loyal to you for. You know what I'm saying? But I value love more than loyalty, me personally. I feel that. What was one of the biggest life lessons you had to learn in your life? One day you're here, the next day you go. I ain't been chilling with some niggas the next day they ain't wake up. I'm mature with some money, nigga, they pull it off and then come back. Like, that's probably one of the biggest lessons I learned. Like, arguing with your niggas don't last. Like, you never know you're gonna see them the next day you wake up. So, I just live every day forward from this day forward. Like, I don't even think about the past, I don't even talk about it. Yeah. We ain't got a conversation about the past. Like, we home, boy, we, used to, we got arguments, so we don't talk about that. Oh. It go out love, you know what I'm saying? And like, at the end of the day, like, love gonna bring you back. If you love each other. Only way it don't bring you back if you were loyal to something. What that mean you were loyal to the money that mean you were getting you loyal to the bitches we were fucking, you were loyal to. It was something you were loyal to, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. if you love me, we'd be still here today. No matter what, you know yeah. what I mean? That makes sense to you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I hear you on that. So what that motivated you to start making music at first? My partner. My family, my family big on music, like my mama, my, my, my aunties, my cousins, like my family big on music. Mama side and daddy side. Yeah, artists is on both sides, so I was kind of sworn into music, but I never wanted to make it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was the person, like, I rather want to give you some bars in the background. And to people, like, bro, why you just don't try this shit? You still trying to make me say this? I'm like, bro, I ain't no rapper. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're like, bro, just don't try this shit. My homeboy made me try this shit. First song just took off. Really? The first, first song? <laughs> out of here. I'm like, damn. Did that shock you? It, I still didn't believe it was real because I was still doing my everyday shit, hustling. Banging like it's just a normal life. We going to the club, nigga. Like, bro, that shit hard. I'm like, what shit? <laughs> like, I heard that shit. Like, what shit? Like, you rapping this shit now? Like, I'm like, man, ain't no motherfucker rapper. Like, you know what I'm saying? I feel like Jesus when nigga walk up to a nigga. Like, these folks treating a nigga like Jesus or some motherfucker around here. Like, <laughs> I did another song. That motherfucker did better than the first song. I'm like, oh shit. Oh shit. Couple hundred thousand views. I'm like, oh shit. This shit like like right away. You gotta keep in mind it when the internet first started, like really yeah. YouTube first started, so it was amazing to me. But I was still stuck in the street to a to a point where I ain't understand rap. I ain't even understand what I was taking myself. Like I ain't understand what I was even doing because I was so far in the streets, like instead of the studio, I would rather really be in the trap. Instead of the studio, I'd rather be with some bitches. In the studio, I'd rather be with my nigga. Like, it wasn't nothing. Like, I'd rather play the game before I go to the studio until the third song was good. And now I'm here. I done bought my own studio, just all of us in here chilling, like, learning how to work this shit. Like, 
me and my homeboy, like all of us just rappers now, like all of them just rappers now, like it came from them just working the equipment. Just sitting there, push, push the button, bro. He said just push three, just said push face by Ellen. <laughs> I don't get it, bro. And after a while, I'm going home. I come back, he, he like, bro, listen to this. Like, like what this sound like? I'm like, man, get the fuck out of here. Like, same way I'm doing myself, though. Like, not no different to, no disrespect to them. Like, I did myself the same way. Like, I don't want to hear the cop look at you as something else. Like, we came up as something else. Like. We had dreams of being Nino Brown and them and shit. You see what I'm saying? Like, we had no dreams of rocking the stage or, you know what I'm saying? It just was a something we had to do. Freestyle in the car on the way home or you break out your jump moves and a bus free. It's like, like being a kid, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't no shit that we wanted to be in life. We just wanted to be rich. So that probably was the main goal. Like, just wanting to be rich. Like, that was a quicker way for a nigga with feelings to get rich. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They ain't hiring niggas like us. Yeah. So I might well try a, 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 a flow or two. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, cool J or some motherfucker. I might try to be some <laughs> motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? That's a quicker way to me getting 10, 15 to show. Mm -hmm. How else? They ain't getting us too many avenues to make that type of money. So that's how I'm looking at the shit back then. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm seeing niggas like niggas from my city come home with this money like Dolphin. Got it, them and shit like they coming home with it in the nigga face. Like, I want to be a part of that shit too. Like, that's free money. You just get up and talk about your life. If you don't, somebody else gonna talk about it and get paid. Mm -hmm. So the that's basically what a nigga do. You don't talk about the nigga besides you gonna talk about it and get the same life. You know what I'm saying? So fuck that. I wanna talk about it too. <laughs> Lucked up, they gave me five thousand to show. Nigga, when they start giving me five hundred and fifteen hundred shit. 2500 where I can get my nigga 500 and two, 300 and shit, 2500 a lot of money for us not doing nothing but talking. <laughs> for like 30 minutes, 20 minutes, dude. All right. They think about having one song. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They pay you for the fact you got your 500 for the show, you go in there and do one song six times. Yeah. Make it look like you got a concert. <laughs> oh, you got, you got 70 niggas with you. They bump it one song eight times. Oh, look, DJ start this shit over. Man, everybody's sweating in there like a pig. Whoever well, like the song, they just, man, oh God, start that motherfucker over. That's it. Man, you didn't start buck jumping with the bitches all the way over here to the gang fight. Like, it's just, it was amazing, bro, to me, like, to see that. Once I did my first show, that's all I had to see. Like, damn, these people love me. They love me. Like, it, it wasn't no wrong I could do. Like, so I just, that was that what took me probably the first show to where, like, all the other shit didn't amaze me. Fifty, sixty niggas, that was our regular lifestyle. Like waking up and finding each other. Like we didn't have to call each other. We, we was in the same neighborhood. You see what I'm saying? Like we knew where to find each other. To this day, we still know where to find each other. You see what I'm saying? Like we don't got to talk on no devices and shit. You know what I'm saying? So. Again, bro, like it wasn't it wasn't the music game for me. I, I always liked the music, like I like the shit like R. Kelly and Runner Eye and shit. Like I like music. You know what I'm saying? Like I like the Nelly Down Down Baby and shit. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's just the music for me. Like my auntie coming there cooking singing. Tell everybody get behind and singing too. You know what I'm saying? Even the gangsters in the family. Look up niggas who there walking there sagging they pants coming there singing, man. Love between the sheep. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just was a it was a movement for my family. Like so far music, my family gave me the game. Like, to the people who can't sing, they'll be sitting there saying, nah, say it like this. You know what I'm saying? Boom, boom, boom. Like, I can't, can't say it like that. You can't say it like that. They trying to fix each other in that motherfucker. Like, even though none of us couldn't do it until we looked up, all of us can do it. You see what I'm saying? So this shit like. I'm big on family, bro. My shit came from family. Yeah. Again, love. You know what I'm saying? Like, all comes back to love. Huh? All come back to love. Yeah. How'd you link up with Gucci? Uh, my nigga Scooter. Okay. Scooter called me up at the blue. Said, "What you doing, boy?" I'm like, "You know what I'm doing?" He like, man, get to Atlanta. I got a surprise for you. I pulled up and him and Goo up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. At the time, I was already head to Atlanta because me and Rocco had a meeting at the same time. So, oh, yeah. So, 
in the mix of Gucci, it was Rocco. And Rocco was like, Gucci, let's do a, a joint, like a, a joint, on, joint venture on together. Like, let's do it together. Like, me and you, he was like, Gucci, like, ah, oh, do respect, Rocco. I don't need no help with this boy. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you want him, you can have him. But if I fuck with him, I just want to turn him up different. You know we different. He know we different. Yeah. That was his exact word. Hmm. What was it like working with him? Like working with myself on crack. Like, what I mean by that, like he two times worse than me and all the shit. Like attitude, like he hit first, like, like, like the King Von situation. How he left for all these niggas and just jumped out the car, just him, the nigga that was in the car with him, even though he was a hundred deep. Like, that's Gucci. You get what I'm saying? Like, I ain't saying he no bad motherfucker, no tough motherfucker, nothing like that. I'm just saying, that's just him. That's me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could be 50 deep in and see my man, and I'm just gone like that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, me and Gucci clicked on the street level of, of ways and shit, like, not the corporate ways, if that makes sense to you. Like, when I was saying to him, we ain't go through label shit. We did everything a different way to now, the way he doing it with his artists now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You go back through how he was picking his artists, and then you had me, Walker, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Thug, Scooter, who had Migo, Pee Wee, Frank yeah, Robert Fresh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like. That was his type of lineup. He ain't even had only person he had that made different type of music. What's up? Everybody else was niggas like him from the streets. Niggas who hustled. Niggas like head first. Niggas like everybody else had a, a a hustle edge. You get what I'm saying? Like we really was doing more hustling than rapping. <laughs> Gucci was the only motherfucker really rapping. Like he, he can sit in that motherfucker do. 20 songs in a day. Like the first time I ever saw a nigga do it, like, soon as you hear the beat, that motherfucker just, he gone. He ain't even heard the beat, like, doom, he gone, like, just rapping. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, I learned a lot of shit from him. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a couple years ago, you and Gotti linked back up, or he brought you out at his birthday concert, but. Yeah. How did that all come about, man? Shit. Nah, I don't even know. I don't even know, bro. Like, we, again, we were chilling. Me and my people, we were chilling. And they called out the blue, said, hey, bro. Like, you know, bro, want, bro, at the field, they perform. Everybody performing at the field, they perform. Like, Bro, wanna college? I'm like, who a bro? They like, got it. This was before the day though. It was like four days before. And we chopped it up. This the first time me and him ever chopped it up in life. But yeah, we didn't speak on no old shit. You know what I'm saying? We ain't never speak on none of the shit. The past shit that went on with us, what went on in the city, we didn't even bring it up. Yo, bro, got it, I'm boo. Blah, 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 blah. This is what we doing. This, that, this, that, 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 that. We ain't, I ain't on that, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's enough money out here for everybody. That was the end of it. How big, how big was that for the city of Memphis? I mean, it was very big because it's still, the city was divided. Then at the time you had money bag, had already signed with got it. He was from our side, you see what I'm saying? So it made it more divided. Mm. So it really like bridged the gap a little bit. But it hurt the gap too because all the street niggas that was involved in it, all the, the other shit that came with what happened between me and him, they ain't understand it. You know what I'm saying? They ain't understand it until some of them still don't understand it, but more the majority of them understand it now, three, four years later than back then when it happened, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. and then you have to look at the majority of our homeboys and shit. You got to look at they 20 to 28 years old, so they still moving one way. 
So a lot of shit looked crazy to them four, five years ago. Don't look crazy to them no more, cause they was our age now. Yeah. We made the situation, we made the transition, you know what I'm saying? Like, they could, they could kind of seen that, like, okay, damn, do what brother did four years ago. Well, he realized he wasn't on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, he realized he wasn't on it, and like, man, these boys really getting money. These boy really get money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then you gotta look at the wall over me. Like us, me just going through the situation with him, it made it hard for me. It was like the can't, it was like get rich or die trying, 50 cent and majestic type shit. Like niggas made a choice. You know what I'm saying? The streets was making a choice between a nigga. That, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he gangster, but he rap better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's doing this, but he doing that. Yeah, he was popping before. You know what I'm saying? So it's splitting the fan base up. Yeah, I can rap too, but <laughs> fuck that. He been here a little long way, rather. You know what I'm saying? Like it's made made people pick and choose. You know what I'm saying? So us bridging the gap, we made his sister cool to pump my shit right there. You know what I'm saying? Like. When y'all get in the car, niggas bumping God around me, they like, you get what I'm saying? Like, versus, man, I wonder, can I play this junk? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I bump God, I, I be listening to God, but, oh, you you think bro be mad if I, you know what I'm saying? Versus, it really didn't mean shit to us anyway. Me, period, personally, like, I ain't mean, I don't give a fuck. But people took it that way, like, to this day, they still take it that way, like, Damn, like, I don't know, like DJs, if I'm in the club or something, like, I wonder should I play this shit while he ain't here. Or, you get what I'm saying? Cause they went, to, they did all that shit to me. Like, wouldn't play my music and shit in certain clubs cause of, you know what I'm saying? Like, I went through a lot of shit to this day, still going through a lot of shit. I rather not speak on cause they ain't gonna do nothing but hurt me. You know what I'm saying? So, hell, the shit I don't speak on because they ain't gonna do nothing but hurt, him, hurt me and make it worse on me. You know what I'm saying? It's already hard as it is. Being a street nigga doing the shit I'm doing and trying to make it out there. On top of this nigga fighting their own folks, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Niggas just gotta learn how to keep silent. I've been just silent about a lot of shit. Yeah. Silent turned to four years later. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga was silent four years, five years, and then look, it looked like two, three months. Felt like two, three months. It looked up it was five years ago, you know what I'm saying? So How'd you link up with Akon? That was like, you know, people knew you from Gucci maybe, and then you signed with Akon. That's come completely a whole different vibe. Yeah, like, like completely whole, different vibe. Like I you said, Gucci on wasn't the on the industry. This was probably more of an industry type of yeah, a situation. Like, again, like everything me and Gucci did was the street way. <laughs> Everything me and Akon deal with the total opposite. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was like, he changed me into, from Boo Dirty into, like, damn, I don't want to be him. Just seeing his lifestyle, like, like when the first day I met him, he flew me and my partners and shit out to, to him. Like, Gucci didn't do that. You know what I'm saying? So it was really like, and shit you see on TVs and shit with the, like when Biggie did the shit with, come, I mean, uh, with Puffy and shit when he got his check in the McDonald's box and shit. It was like, <laughs> damn, this shit really happened. Like, this ain't Gucci, it's Akon. This nigga, like, this Akon, you know what I'm saying? Like, so for a minute, it was just, nigga, first day we, we flew us out, pool party and shit. Like, he ain't, we ain't talk about the music, like. It's his birthday and shit. Like we, they got a private pool party for him and shit. Like, like it was a whole different atmosphere. You got Megan Goods right here. You got Lisa <laughs> Ray right here. You got uh, Terrence Howard. You got, you know what I'm saying? Like all these niggas, Tyrese. They just pulling up like, like me and my niggas in the hood. You see what I'm saying? Like. Just keep in mind, like, all the shit I did with Gucci was still street shit, like, Rocco's, the, like, all the people we were fucking with, it was still street shit from city to city, the, the Rick Rosses and shit like that, like, 
His shit was different. You know what I'm saying? This nigga, the last nigga who did a song with Michael Jackson. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> saying yeah. The last nigga did a song with Michael Jackson. Yeah. So, he showed the nigga a different way to a point where we forgot about music. In the three, four years that I went missing, we forgot about the music. And I met Khan through Thug. Oh, really? When Thug signed, I mean, when, when Gucci went to jail and Thug was fucking with Boo. Okay. Before he got with uh, who he with. 300. Yeah, before 300, he was fucking with Boo. Yeah, his Akon's brother. Akon, bro. Yeah. He did a show in Memphis. And when he came to Memphis, he was like, bro, you got to come out. Boom, 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 I came and fucked with him. He came back to the studio after the show. You know what I'm saying? And his role manager who booed him had set up. Hey, y'all give me a block, bro. His role manager who he had set up told Thug, like, nah, we got the role, you can't go to no studio and shit. Like, Boo gave me specific orders, like, you can't do this. Thug was like, nah, you don't understand. I got to go to the studio with this nigga. Like, this ain't like it real city. And the man was like, what you mean? He was like, trust me, bro, let's just go to the studio. And in the mix of me and him in the studio, we had three sides to the studio. My engineer was mixing the music. He was mixing the music, and they sitting over there just listening. Like, he asked him, like, yo, who is that? My engineer kind of looked at him. I'm, I'm looking at the shit from the door. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? He like, who you walked in the door with? Like, got cocky with him. Like, who you walked in the door with? Like, that's who it is. He like, oh, I ain't never heard his music. I'm just, you know what I mean? I'm here with Thug. He like, oh, I ain't know who you were here with. I thought you were from Memphis, bro. So, hey. so me and Thug and I working, I come out the door, he let him listen to 10, 15 songs. You see what I'm saying? He was like, I come out the door, he just go crazy. <laughs> like, bro, Akon don't sound you ain't, I ain't a real nigga. I ain't a real nigga. <laughs> I'm like, what? Bro, when I leave here tonight, we get back to Atlanta. Then we get back to Cali. I'm gonna make sure Aka hit your phone, bro. Give me both of your numbers, give me and leave me with two, three other numbers, get in touch with you. And the, again, I'm looking at this shit like it ain't nothing. Cause I ain't music, I ain't really never looked into me being an artist, you see what I'm saying? Even with Gucci, you see what I'm saying? So being with Gucci was like my everyday life was just traveling. You see what I'm saying? So with him. It's like, I'm like, all right, bro. So Thug was like, bro, you know I put you in the door. I'm like, you put me in the door or what? He's like, bro, they gonna call you, bro. I'm some real nigga. Them African boy, them boy gonna do it. They gonna do it. Trust me, they gonna call, bro. I'm like, all right. Three, four days, pay, nobody call. About the sixth day. Yo! I'm like, who is this? They cut. I'm like, oh, bullshit. Like, he like, nah, nigga, it's me for real. Like, I'm like, what's up? He like, I know you don't really believe in me. That's why I'm gonna go and send you a ticket. You know what I'm saying? You and three, four of your homeboy, I'm gonna send y'all a ticket. Y'all just come on, fuck with me. And then from there, like the first day I play, when I met him, we kind of kicked it all day in the studio with the last thing we did. You know what I'm saying? So, in the studio, I played like 30 minutes of song, or like 10, 15, 20 songs. And I had the last song I was gonna play. And he he was kind of Barry Gordy, that nigga. Checking three, four phones, texting, <laughs> fucking with the bitches, you know what I'm saying? Like mingling with my folks. He wasn't really acting like he was listening to the music, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So the last song I played was like a, a pain song, a problem song. Like, the problem song that me and him get, when he came on, the first word I said out of my mouth, he was like, this it. <laughs> like, this it. I heard in your voice, this it right here, that's what I was looking for. That's the pain I was looking for. As soon as the song came on, that's it, you see what I'm saying? He was like, that's what I leave, that with me right there. So I left it with him, man. We ain't even talk about music no more the whole trip. <laughs> the whole trip was just fun and 
showing the nigga what it's gonna be like with him the whole time until a point. Well, he showed the nigga so many avenues of getting money to, we forgot we were artists. You see what I'm saying? Like, he's still getting booked off his old shit. Mm -hmm. He got, goddamn it, 10, 15 years of music that ain't nobody even heard. Like, we got albums and shit together that ain't no touched it. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, really? I done wrote music that's out for him. You see what I'm saying? Like, to this day, like, nobody never understand. You know what I'm saying? They'll, they'll never understand, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he don't even care about the music. This nigga got his own city. How many <laughs> niggas you know got their own city? You know what I'm saying? So we used to have argument nights to a point where all my partners, my parents, you know what I'm saying, my homeboy and shit back home was getting this look at me like I made it. Like, like bro, you were cunning the other day. Like, come on, bro, you just move you in, move you in the mansion in Atlanta, got the gas station and shit. You talking about you ain't made it. You ain't been home in four months. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, every time I talk to you, you and 10 other niggas in the house, y'all doing all type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, how you ain't made it, bro? Like, uh, what was the, what was the show, bro? They were making the band. And like, okay. nigga, every time we look up, like making the band. We look on the internet, you, <laughs> your home, one of your homeboys on the other side of the house. The other one, y'all shooting basketball, the other one in the pool, the other one playing the game, like, nigga, y'all living, you know what I'm saying? But we looking like, damn, we waiting on our turn. You see what I'm like, we just chilling. We really just kicking it. We ain't, we ain't did shit. Until me and him, it, it went to arguments and like, damn, bro, like, we ain't gonna do no music. He, he could explain to me that he wasn't really own music. He just really had a liking for me. You, could, you see what I'm saying? So it took me a couple of years to find out like it, it was bigger than music with us. Like he ain't really care for the music, he cared for me. To a point like me and him used to argue, but I'm like, bro, I just want to rap. <laughs> like crown arguments to a point he like, you just don't understand what I'm trying to do, bro. Like. He took me to Dubai with him. We had a heated argument. We'd have been, keep in mind, we'd have been to London, we'd have been to Canada, Australia, we'd have been to tour, like we working, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, but in the US is like, he don't even care. But overseas, we did four tours. <laughs> like, he was like, bro, yo, fan base over here gonna be three times better than over there, they gonna pay you three times better. I'm like, fuck that, bro, I'm trying to feed the hood. Like, these folks need to hear me over here. He was like, trust me, bro, that shit don't matter. I'm like, it do matter, bro. Shit, everything I thought was big, it was so small to him. You know what I'm saying? To a point, like, uh, we had a producer saying, we like, bro, he just went, he just went gold, bro. He like, all right, I go collect this money later. Like, like, nah, we needed nothing. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like. They just never mattered to him to a point he took me to Dubai. And I went to all the meetings with him and them motherfuckers were like, okay, we get started here. In 19 months, we'll be worth $4.9 billion. And, and like, I'm on my phone texting my bitch and her $4.9 billion. <laughs> oh, what that shit you just said again? He's, We'll make 2.9 billion here, then we'll make another four point something here, and in, in the next uh, 45 years, we'll be worth, you know, 70 billion, this and that. It'll have our own city over here, like, and he already knew it amazed me before we even walked out the room, you see what I'm saying? So as we going back to the elevator, he was like, nigga, you still want to rap? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that, we, that was the exact word walking back to the elevator, like, <laughs> hey, OG, hey, nigga, you, you still want to rap? <laughs> I looked at him like, he like, nigga, you still want to rap? Well, you want to wait three, four more years. He like, nigga, I promise you everything rap was going to give you, I'm going to give it to you. It ain't about the rap, OG. I know you want to make it. Like, I can push the button at any time. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I want you to be a part of this. 
just enough shit to change everybody around you. You just got to wait. To a point, I didn't understand what wait meant. We didn't talk for a year and a half. A year, you know what I'm saying? A year and a half. Like, he would call out the blue, like, yo, where you at? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm finna send you a ticket. You and you and your couple of your boys, like, let's, you know who I'm, I'm sending for, like, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? So, we back rocking. He back explaining, like, I had to cut everything off because didn't nobody understand what I was trying, you know what I'm saying? But nigga, I ain't forget about you, you know what I'm saying? Like, pull up and do all the shit he always said, you know what I'm saying? So, again, the music with him, like, when we meet every day, we go to the studio every day to no matter what. If he called me today, we going to the studio. Yeah. Like, no matter what, he going to the studio. Man, he, if he put it out or not, I don't know about that, but like, <laughs> again, he doing, like we might go to the studio Monday, doing all Latin music. Tuesday, he doing some goddamn reggae music. Wednesday, he doing African music. Thursday, he back a gangster. <laughs> Talking about he locked up and, and, and shit, Friday, he back lonely. I'm so, you know what I'm saying? He back Akon, you know what I'm saying? Like, so. Again, it was two different experiences to this day. Like, Akon helped me shift and being a man, learn how to take care of my family, learn how to get my life straight, career straight. Being able to, you know what I'm saying? I didn't start me three businesses since I've been with Akon, you know what I'm saying? So, but like, the, like the momentum of living different, like, he put my mind on different shit. Like, nigga, this can change you forever. Mm -hmm. You talking about going to buy a chain? Nigga, I bet nothing about you now. Nigga, buy your chain for what? When I can spend the same thing on this and you profit nine times, <laughs> yeah, boy, please. Real shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I bought him some Giuseppe's and shit for his birthday. He's like, appreciate it, bro. This is the highest gift anybody ever got me. Really? In the house, he's saying it loud with all the people in the house. <laughs> you know, but, but they already understand the gift don't mean nothing. He got on Levi's and the regular belt. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I come in with Gucci's and three, four channel, he looking at me like I'm stupid. Like, I'm thinking, looking like I'm impressing them. He like, do they know your jeans, my, your jeans Gucci, but my jeans Levi. Who can tell from right here with me and you? <laughs> I'm like, nigga, shit, me? You know what I'm saying? He like, <laughs> you a nigga, you understand about another year or two. Yeah. And another year or two, I understood, like, Damn, boy, that money got low. Fuck that shit, I'm finna get them Levi like Con and <laughs> thug that shit out like, fuck that shit, right? We gonna just, fuck it, we gonna thug like Con. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, again, it was a different way of living. You got a nigga like Gucci going to spend 13000 on one outfit. If you got 13000 your name, you finna buy eight, 800 worth of shit. You know what I'm saying? He gonna say, boy, we gonna get that shit back. You know what I'm saying? He's saying the same thing, but he just saying it in a different turn. Cunt telling the nigga walk in the room, cunt him over, say 4.9 B, and you say, oh look, the fuck? You know what I'm saying? So, it changed me. <clears throat> I bet, yeah. All right, boo, before we wrap it up, man, what's coming for you this year, man? You got a next single, you got a project in the works, what's coming up? Yeah, I got a, I got a couple of projects I want to do. I'm going to do. You know what I mean? Like, me and a couple of my homeboy back working and shit, so we're going to put some projects and shit together. You know, like I said, I still got the love for the music, so I'm back working. You know what I'm saying? Me and, me and Khan back working. You know what I'm saying? So everything before I got to do with music is come back around for me. I got to see my life in order, a family in order, a homeboy in order. Everything around me in order so I can do the music now. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's time. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't never put a time on music or age limit on music. So, good music is good music. You know what I'm saying? So. I just packed up my shit and went live on the road. Fuck it, I had to shake back. I've been worried about doing no show, but selling these bowls. I had to get back. Two, two, three with a kid.